What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show. We about to break down this last episode of Power Book 4, Season 2, <laughs> Episode 8. It's a mouthful. Uh, Diamond is the new candy man. No. I kill kids. <laughs> oh, man. I appreciate everybody, man. Before we get started, I want to give a special shout out to everybody in the comments. Ready? Before we got started, I really appreciate that because sometimes I be having my difficult moments as well. And it's always good to know that, hey, it's people ready and and that get me motivated. You know what I'm saying? Knowing that everybody is ready for the show in the comments. And, uh, you know, I appreciate that. So, you know, shout out to my girl, Rashonda. What's up? First in the building. I appreciate you. She always holding it down. Jay Lynn, what's up? What's up? Reggie M, what's up with them Philly teams, brother? Desiree, how you doing, Desiree? What's up? What's up? K Leezy in the building. What's good? Uh, AG, what's up? What's up with y'all? So I appreciate everybody. You know, AG said this episode was insane. In the membrane, you know what I'm saying? They did have a lot going on. Um, I didn't expect Diamond to turn into Candyman. <laughs> and baby Obama's mama, she was something else. Uh, she mad. Well, it's all your fault. It, no. And nah. <laughs> I think she was wrong, though, for saying it's his fault in a way. Because she didn't know he watched it. If if she had knew that he wanted to watch him, you know, use his boxing skills, and 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 that's what actually went down, then, I mean, I get it. How many of you all have thought about it and would blame Diamond for what happened to baby Obama? Um, I think that he is to blame for the simple fact He's going to sit here and watch this boy fight two dudes while he in a suit getting ready to go on the news. Even if he beat him, what if he got a black eye or something? (laughs) Busted lip going on the news. Yeah, I was in a fight, but I won. So I don't know. I think uh, Diamond is to blame for that. That's just me. I would have been like, man, why you let him fight, dude? Why you ain't stop it? Why you ain't come and break it up or something? Why you sitting there watching him? I did it. I beat you. No fair. <laughs> Leon's ribs. Leak XO when Diamond was pouring that money on him gave me anxiety. <laughs> He was trying to make it rain on his own damn self, huh? Why I give you anxiety, Neek? What what was up with that? I didn't... That didn't do much for me right there, so I don't know uh, what happened with that. MC Dam. McDam. You said it's Felipe Lobos related to Miguel and Maria. He shouldn't be, but... You never know in the world of power. They did say they heard something about Tommy in New York or something, so who knows. What's up, Hope Lee? How you feeling? Hope everything is all good with you. Queen Brielle, what's good? How you feeling? Appreciate you as uh, coming through. McDam said, I know everybody said the statement Shay made about Felipe, Miguel, and Maria. What statement? I don't know what statement you talking about. Jay Lynn say she wouldn't uh, blame Diamond. Okay. Neek. Well, technically, they were already picking on Obama. That's what I'm saying. Exactly. It's not really his fault in a way. You right. But I'm just saying that it's his fault because when he dropped Leon off, he stood there and watched the two dudes approach him and that's the only thing that I would say is his problem. 
other than that, it's really not his fault. If he, <laughs> that's what's so complicated in a way about this. It really wasn't his fault. You got to teach him how to fight and to protect himself. And they were already picking on Leon and things. So that's why I see a lot of people may say it's not his fault. But he was standing right there when the two dudes walked up. And at that moment, he could have said something, stepped in. And by just standing there to watch to see if he could defend himself or see what happened, it went way worse than you thought it was going to go. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, AG say, what if Diamond wasn't there? I think Leon might have been deleted anyway. True. True. I agree. I agree with that. If Diamond wasn't there and Leon did that, I mean, uh, that's why it's complicated. He put it this way. I don't know what the what the exact word would be. So saying it's his fault it's probably still not his fault that he didn't step in. But I would say this. He would have some type of guilt, at least. You see what I'm saying? Because you know that you watched it. You could have said something, possibly intervened. So in a way, fault is probably not the best word for it. Or responsibility. But he does have some type of responsibility for that moment not saying something since you decided to take an uh, interest in this boy's life. It's very tricky. You know, it's very tricky. I wouldn't say he deserves any type of punishment or go to jail or any of that stuff. Um, but, you know, he he was there. And it's hard especially on him, I'm saying. That's why I can see why he kind of was having the problem trying to make it rain on himself. I think he was hoping he went back to jail or something, kind of punish himself. And because he didn't feel like he was punished for what happened, he was kind of punishing himself. But then he didn't want to go back to jail. No! Queen Brielle, he just naive and sheltered. He was excited about that punch. True. Very true. And he wasn't really ready for that yet. Like, he only learned one punch. <laughs> and he should have learned that, you know, the first thing in fighting and boxing is what they tell you. Protect yourself at all times. So you punch this dude, you don't turn your back on him to celebrate unless he down for the count or dead. So that was the first rule in all fights. And any training and fighting that I had in life and learning, whether it was karate, judo, whatever the case it may be, you always protect yourself at all times. You always keep your eye on your opponent, respect your opponent. You don't know what the hell that person may do. And you just punched him in the face by baby Obama. He was embarrassed. And that's one of the problems of why people get killed and shot a lot these days is that these young boys, they can't take a, a, a L with the hands. The embarrassment is so great, they'll shoot you. Or better yet, I'll just shoot you and avoid the fight from the get-go. That way you never beat me up. Whereas in my day, you could get beat up. Or you can beat somebody up. You can learn to defend yourself and be respected that way. You didn't have to shoot everybody. Um, now, and it also could add a little bit to it. Because if you would have got beat up back in my day, yeah, we may have heard about it. But everybody didn't see it. We'd have been like, man, you heard about Sharif got beat up? Damn, it was bad. This, that, and the other happened. And everybody would hear about it. But... It wasn't on video. Now everybody records every beat down and things. So I guess it's even worse to take a beat down because everybody in the world going to see it on video. And so, you know, these guys nowadays, they, they just can't, they can't take it. So that's messed up. 
uh, Neek say back in 2001, we could fight it out because nobody really had guns. Damn, Neek. In 2001, they were still shooting the fair one. <laughs> I'm talking about the 90s. But, hey, that still was good. You know what really kind of probably made things worse is everybody with the smartphone, 2008. It's probably, or 2010, because in 2008 is when the first iPhone came out, which is the first really smartphone of today, but everybody didn't buy one until, or have one until probably 2010 when they had so many Androids and other stuff out or whatever, and they uh, finally had a lot of them out there, so, you know, then people started making all these videos and things so what's up one journey ag that's right never turn your back um let's see rain ah queen brielle he reminded me of that bmf detective son timid it seemed like they got a lot of those kids around in these shows don't it um but that's exactly what happened and because of it's just the reverse of the same situation, pretty much, um, getting bullied, but he didn't have anybody teach him how to fight, so he took a gun, whereas this kid was getting bullied, he learned how to fight, but the bully used the gun on him this time, which, you know, just a horrible result, and so, you know, it it is messed up. Uh, Reggie M, by the 90s, everybody had guns in Philly. Yeah, that's what I was thinking in the 90s. Towards the end of the 90s, and Chicago was getting kind of bad. It wasn't like, uh, you know, well, it wasn't like today, but it started getting bad. And, you know, hey, it is what it is. Shout out to Savannah Rivers, Rose, and Moray. Always been coming through with the support. Super chat. Been my consistent super chatter for a long time. I appreciate it. Spread love and support. Savannah, appreciate your support. Um, Now, let's talk a little bit about Candyman, Diamond, and what happened and, and what do you all think is gonna happen with little candy man. No, I feel kids. <laughs> you think Diamond gonna go off on the deep end? I mean, he killed this cop, which that's one thing in the world of power. Uh they must be tied in with John Wick. <laughs> They got gold coins. How the hell do they get rid of all these bodies? But nevertheless, I be thinking a little too much, I guess. I enjoy the show, but I look at it as like gangster porn. (laughs) I don't try to put it together like a, a Scorsese film. But anyway, this dude, which he was getting on my damn nerves anyway, and why is he sweating diamonds so hard? And all it took was that little tip from old boy, uh, baby Obama's daddy, the daddy that didn't give a damn about Obama and smacking the comics out of his hand and couldn't do nothing. Now, I'm not saying that now nah, he wanted his son dead. I get it. You could have been hard on him or maybe not care, but that don't mean you wanted to kill him. So I ain't going to say it like that. And sometimes some people equate stuff like that. And, uh, you know, yeah, you could be an asshole (laughs) and not really do right by your kid, but you wasn't thinking about killing him. And so now, you know, anyway, that simple tip was a lot it took. And this dude come. And Diamond had to give him a sliz ice, which I don't know how he reached him, but he caught him. And Tommy, it's like Tommy enjoyed watching this when he saw it and he he watched everything transpire. It's like Tommy was like, okay, yeah, I got me a killer back on my side. And I don't know, man, do you all think Diamond about to turn into like a bigger killer than Tommy? Shout out to Joe Sikora. I love him as an actor, good person and everything. 
but they had a few close-ups of Tommy on this episode that I realized, damn, man, Tommy getting old, man. Shout out to Joe Sakor. Much love, brother. But uh, a couple of these close-ups, I was like, damn, Tommy getting old. He don't look as young as he used to in uh, First Power. Little young, crazy white boy. Tommy's starting to get old up in here. He's starting to get some wrinkles. He's starting to look like the old gangster up in here. Okay, <laughs> But, uh, you know, Tommy don't look too bad. He's still in good shape, at least. But this dude squirted all the... He didn't squirt it. I know people want somebody to squirt all the time, but this dude done squirt it. And how they gonna get all this up out the barbershop? They ain't even closed the damn uh, curtains. <laughs> they gonna have a lot of cleaning, man. And this the second cop that's came to this barbershop as the last location on their cell phone. Like, this the damn black hole barbershop up in here. Like, this is, they should call this barbershop Last Cut. Ah! That goes well with the cut he just gave a uh, little punk-ass cop over here. <laughs> the Last Cut. You come, you get this cut here, you never get another. It's the last cut you'll ever need. Man, I don't understand how they gonna pull this one off, but I guess Diamond about to go into beast mode. <laughs> I kill kids and cops. I kill everything moving. I am Diamond. Anyway. <laughs> Tommy finally decided to close the door, lock the door, and pull the shade down. <laughs> he ain't even pulled the shade down. They still had dude there. Anyway, we'll see what they do with this, man. <laughs> what do y'all think is going to happen with, with this, the last cut? <laughs> uh, man, yeah, Bennigan's body. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand how he gonna do this, but anyway, we see that Diamond then really went off the deep end. Stephen Harris say Tommy, 47 years old, still a good actor in power. Yeah, I like Tommy. It's just that a couple of the close-ups I looked at, I was like, oh, wow. He getting up there, and if we think about it, this show been damn near on for 10 years we've been looking at Tommy. Damn near. So, we didn't watch them get older on here. But, uh, yeah, black don't crack. So, we looking at him crack up a little bit. <laughs> Obsessive alcoholics say, trim my hair up, I'm bald. <laughs> I know, right? Savannah say, Tommy look great. Tommy, you still got him out there. Go for it. Yeah, he in great shape. I give it to him. Uh, Ramon Hope, I guess Tommy going to get get the diamond he been looking for. And so, yeah, that's the thing, man. Uh, and Hope Lee say, did you see the eye exchange between Tommy and Diamond before he killed this P.O.? Yeah, so that's a good point. But I think, so when the eye exchange, let me know if this is what you're talking about. I'll see if I can pull it up on the pictures. But uh, the eye exchange, so when he was getting the bag, you saying, Tommy was down there, and Diamond was like, no. When the cop was coming and he looked at him and Tommy kind of looked at him, and uh, it seemed like uh, Diamond gave him like this look, and Tommy was like looking to see, okay, let me see what he going to do. It's like Tommy kind of... I guess stood back to see what Diamond was going to do type look. Like, okay, is he about to kill this dude? Snap, what's going to happen? Let's see, is this... All right, so this is about when he was getting the stuff off the ground and uh, he stopped Tommy and he was like, no. And uh, Tommy kind of looked like, what? And 
then he just kind of like zoned out and Tommy just kind of like backed away. You sure? <laughs> and next thing you know, here come old Copper Root. But see, Diamond told Tommy no. So in my first reaction, uh, last video, I was, some people said that Diamond told Tommy, no, don't shoot the cop. But from what I saw it again, it looked like Diamond was telling Tommy, no, don't bag the stuff up. And that's why Tommy stopped bagging it up and left it alone. Now, here's when Tommy was about to grab the gun. I guess, is this Diamond did? I didn't hear him say no when Tommy's about to grab the gun. I guess maybe he gave him that look right then. But I don't know what he thought would a Diamond would a if, I don't know, man. He got lucky he was able to slice him, give him his last cut of the night. <laughs> Welcome to the last cut. Candyman's here, baby. You know, barbershops used to be the first uh, doctor's offices back in the day. So, I don't know. I think Diamond was tweaking. They didn't really show Diamond other than drinking. So, I don't know. I guess he was just drunk and probably not really thinking it through. And I guess once that cop said, you going back to jail... He like, oh, hell no. <laughs> Rojas is waiting. No. You damn right. You better not come back here, boy. <laughs> hey, Reggie, that's a good name, ain't it? Last cut, barbershop. <laughs> it's the last cut you'll ever need or get. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Anyway, uh, let's see. Obsessive alcoholics, barber, pull out all your teeth. Heck yeah, he would. On the journey with J. Cam, that's because Tommy was about to pop off with the heat. Yeah, but I think he should have let him. I think that would have been smarter than what he did with the slice, giving him the last cut. He took the kiss of death so I could be the last cut. Uh, Tommy, Biggest Smalls, they had to take the last cut. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, but, you know, we'll see the next Diamond. I think that Diamond will sober up and start to be you know, a little more regretful of what happened with baby Obama. And maybe I think baby Obama's mama will put a lot of pressure on him, maybe to feel a certain way, blaming him or something. And I also think that Obama's daddy might pop his head back in the mix somehow and Diamond may have to deal with him somehow. I don't think he want to kill the kid's father though. That would be pretty messed up. Uh, so I think somehow some way he may have some confrontation but I don't think he going to kill the kid's father because then damn that's just horrible. You know what I'm saying? He didn't did that. So you know, you got the boy killed, then killed the father. You didn't erase the whole family line. <laughs> anyway, uh, this episode had a lot going on. It was crazy. I like it. Um, one of the things that I think also is that why does Tommy believe everything Vic tells him? Um, that's kind of a mystery to me. I think Vic is a horrible liar in the show. Because Vic always lying to Tommy. And it's like so obvious when he's lying to Tommy to me. And 
I just don't see why Tommy B taking his word at it. And I think Vic is about to crack because, uh, you know, she had him. I can't remember her name. Is it Stacy? Had him pretty much finger Tommy saying either you killed Vargas or Tommy. Which one is it? And he said Tommy, which, hey, she said, now this is the thing I think really mess up, mess him up. And she was like, we got this and we'll get back to you or whatever the case once she had that info. And if they decide to show Tommy all the things he's been saying and doing, uh oh, it's gonna be Christmas in July, baby. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to my man Reggie M. He say Tommy should know Vic is the snitch by now. Vic ain't a good CI. Hey, that is the truth. And Tommy should be acting like this. I'm gonna play this video. Shout out to my boy Reggie M for coming through with the Cinco de Mayo super chat. Definitely appreciate it. I don't get a lot of love over here. You know, I'm just struggling, trying to make it. I guess people think, uh, you know, I'm all right. But, hey, if I was, I wouldn't be doing this. Anyway. You need to be the godfather. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it is. He Tommy need to be acting like the godfather up in here and getting rid of Vic, making sure he knows dude ain't trustworthy because Vic has been caught in the lie so many times and Tommy just accepts it. Um, when he caught Vic in the alley with the cop, thinking back on it more, no, he shouldn't have shot Vic and the cop at the same time. Tommy probably really would be in jail because <laughs> if they were both laying there dead and Tommy free, I mean, what was the likelihood they were both killed? Who did it? You know what I mean? So that wouldn't have been good. But uh, I think he should try to have Vic killed some kind of way. What's up, Queen Brielle with the super chat? Love, girl, I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and have a toast for you, sis. This one's for you. I appreciate it. I'm going to drink some water, actually. I do got my little drizzink right here, though, but this damn bottle, I done had this bottle for about a year. It's only, what is that, a pint? <laughs> no, nah, that's a, yeah, that's a pint. And show how much I drink. Get drink. Say that for the deaths. Say that for who dies. Somebody got to die. Anyway, let me ask y'all this. Do y'all think this dude and Stacy are got chemistry and are a good couple? Um, I think he's a good actor. And he's playing a good role as a cop. And I actually really like Stacy uh, in this role better than in her role on the shot. I think she's doing a much better job in this role than she does as Dre. Not that she does a bad job acting as Dre on the shot. It's just that the character Dre just isn't that interesting, I guess. So I think this character is more interesting and she's doing a great job uh, on this. But I do not buy the romance between her and the other cop. You know what I'm saying? Rainy J said, no, very awkward. Hope is, man, y'all starting to make me feel like I'm, you know, special up in here. I done got a few super chats tonight. And I definitely appreciate all the love. Hope is lovely. Thank you so much. You got me up here floating on cloud nine over here, moonwalking up in this piece. So uh, I definitely appreciate all the love. <laughs> and, you know, hey, I'll be trying to grind and do what I can. So I do appreciate when, you know, you guys show the love, man. Because to tell you the truth, 
I was really tired and sore and busy so much this week that I almost didn't go live tonight. And I even pushed it back to 1030 because I'm like, oh, my God, I just couldn't get out of bed. And I'm like, man, I see the comments. I'm like, I got my people. I ain't going to let my people down. Here I come. Let me drag myself out of bed and, and get up and get ready. Get it ready for game time. Unlike James Harden, I'm ready. <laughs> so anyway, I appreciate it, man. It makes me feel good to know, hey, people appreciate your work and your love. So that's what's up. Now, back to this topic of their chemistry. I do not see any of the chemistry and I need to find the scene where she kissed him uh, because I did not buy that kissing scene. And you all let me know what you thought. But I could have swore she grabbed his head and kissed him. And yeah, I'm petty and I be looking at stuff like that. But I ain't never have a woman grab my head like, come here, little give me some of that sugar. Mm, yeah. mm, mm, mm. I'll be like, Hey, who had they woman be like, come here, little mother. Come here, and give me some of them lips. Come here. Okay. <laughs> so anyway, when I saw that, that was like, what the heck? Jay Lynn, appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so much, man. I definitely appreciate you, Jay Lynn. You didn't came with the 10, uh, 10 and 10, 10. I'm going to go ahead and give you a little something extra. Go ahead. Bye, y'all. That's for you, Jay Lynn. Oh, uh, what? You want some more? Uh, hey, look. Uh, what? Uh, what? Hey, don't be coming up here trying to make me feel good. I'm going to have to return the favor, girl. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Anyway, uh, you say, yeah, they, they kissed. Man, there wasn't no chemistry with that. And <laughs> I ain't Reggie. I knew you was going to say something about that, James Harden. <laughs> but no, their chemistry is off. And it doesn't seem like he feeling her. I agree. And uh, I'm just saying, you know, hey, I ain't never coming for nobody's job or their money. I ain't going to never say that. Ha <laughs> ha, Jay Lynn, you like that? <laughs> but I think that their chemistry ain't really working as far as the relationship. Now, if they'd have just left it as their partners or co uh, co-workers or whatever, that's fine. Um, but that grabbing the head kiss, that kind of threw me off. Now, uh, another thing that I'm wondering about this is, and before I say that, this is funny. Well, not funny, but a good point. Jay Lynn, they both using each other. I think they are. And that's what it seems like they could have left it as to me. They kind of both, you know, co-workers using each other for information or to get ahead on cases or this or that. But to have them intimately involved threw me off for a loop. Not enough to ruin the show, of course. Now, what's up with Shawnee X and her little grand plans all the time and schemes? I'm glad Janari was... <laughs> hey, shout out to Chris Lofton. He's been doing an excellent job on this show. Chris Lofton is playing the part of Janari. I think he's doing an excellent job on this show this season. And one of the best actors on this show. I, I think that this role is in his wheelhouse. And he's playing it perfectly. And shout out to Chris Lofton handling his business. Now, um, and I think that him and Shawnee got some good chemistry in the sense of how they talk. Because when she was telling him the plan, he like, oh, man. Hey, look, you can't, you, you about to get us killed up in here. You always got some new plan. And now you working with the Serbs and Clark like, oh, man, what are you doing? 
hey, we gonna have to tell Tommy this or something because if he find this out, everything gonna be messed up. So I'm glad he finally didn't got that sugar up out of his system. I guess he's been taking his uh, insulin and got that sugar under control, that booger sugar. <laughs> he, got that, that, he got that sugar under control. He didn't wised up and got her to come clean. But she said she had another plan before she came clean to Tommy. And I'm wondering how this plan is going to work in their favor. Now, she's what? Telling him that they working with the Serbs and Claudia? I mean, in a way, he probably don't care in the sense that because he's still getting the money coming back to his pipeline. But did he want them to starve? Or did he just want all the money and control? And then how could this turn into her favor? Also, on a side note, who think that Jannard and uh, Shanti X have some chemistry? Um, I'll just say that it was some rumblings that he wasn't, you know, probably the most happy with her, uh, you know, maybe looks or appearance or something. Um, but I say these are rumblings, so I'm not saying this is true or that I heard it or any of that firsthand. So don't take this as fact. But anyway, um, I think they actually have good chemistry and that they look good together on the screen when they, you know, doing their couple thing. I can buy it. I can buy it, even though I don't buy some of the little silly ass uh, <laughs> schemes she come up with. I don't be buying that. So let me give a shout out to my girl, AG. Much love to you, Jay. I'm not always on your channel, but you but appreciate your content. Well, thank you, AG, definitely. And I've seen you on here a few times, and I do remember, I don't have a lot of people that come to my channel often and comment and things, so I definitely remember a lot of people that comment often. So I appreciate it, definitely. And, uh, you know, here's, here's a toast to you for the celebration. <laughs> celebration! But uh appreciate all the love and support, uh, definitely. And, uh, you know, I've been trying to work on something else lately, which is, let me put this on full screen. Let me do Stephen A. Put the camera on me. Hold on. Put the camera on me. Put that off. Put it on full screen. Look here. Put it on me. No. <laughs> but I have been working nights uh on my comedy so trying to get better at going to the comedy club and working on my stand-up comedy career so it's very tiresome being up at night and doing so much and all the stuff I had to do and dealing with things and stuff it's just it's been a lot that I've been dealing with. So anyway, I do appreciate it. Hopefully I can get really good. And who knows, man, I might have me a Netflix special. Y'all be like, man, I remember when he was struggling, trying to do it and was talking about it between episodes of power. Now look at him doing drive by comedy. You go boy. <laughs> Shooting off jokes one at a time. <laughs> anyway. Just trying to, you know, diversify. Who knows what may happen in life. So, like they say, you got to put multiple irons in the fire. So, you don't know what may happen if you ain't putting no irons in the fire. You ain't going to get nothing cooking. You ain't saying what I'm saying. Anyway. Miguel Disla. What's up, Miguel? You've been back and forth on this channel for a long time as well. You say come out to NYC, Jay, specifically Manhattan or BK. I'm definitely going to have to do the grind in the New York comedy clubs uh, one day. Hopefully if I, uh, you know, make some money. <laughs> but, you know, uh, 
do what you can in life, you know? Take take what life gives you and make the most out of it. That's all we can do, right? Um, we can make plans and try to do the best we can with them, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when plans change or things happen, you got to try to, you know, adjust your plans and, and things and, and just make the most of it, man. It's not that easy at all. It's not. It's very difficult and frustrating. But if you're still breathing, you, you can't just give up. I don't believe in quitting. I may lose. I may get beat. I may come up short, but I don't want to quit. So anyway. Hey, I appreciate all the love and support, definitely. Uh, Savannah, you say the only way that Tommy Crew could get out from under Stacy is to pin this mess on Vic. True. One thing that I don't understand with Stacy is how is she so dead set on knowing that Tommy is the boss? I don't understand that. Why doesn't she let the evidence determine who's what? Like, she's just so determined that Tommy is the boss and run everything, and he just got in town, and I just don't get why she was so determined that Tommy was the boss. Um, And I don't understand why she got such a hard on for Tommy. It's crazy. She don't do don't barely. She don't even know him. Barely been in town. Reggie M. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Definitely try and do what I can. So, <laughs> Jay Lynn, you say Stacy acted like a typical woman. Okay. I'm not going to say you right or wrong. I'm just going to say, could you elaborate a little more? Explain how is she acting like a typical woman? Is she going off of emotion? Uh, is she what? I don't, I don't know. All I'm asking is a little explanation. Now, I do agree with this. Savannah, Rivers, Rose, Amore. <laughs> Stacy has political aspirations, which is true. And they were saying that she want to be the mayor. So I guess she trying to, what, look like she conquered crime in Chicago, which, of course, is a dream. Um, but I don't know. I think that's probably part of this character's problem is wanting to be the mayor. But I don't think uh, it's going to work out for her in the end. All right. Let's see. Uh, okay. Jay Lynn is saying Stacy don't want to be wrong. <laughs> that's what women be like. They don't want to be wrong. Well... I'm not too familiar. I can't say that's true or false. But what I will say is, if in my experience, if a woman is tied into an answer emotionally, so if it's something that she got emotional ties to, then she ain't going to be wrong. Even if she wrong, she won't listen because... Her emotions is tied into this thing, and that would like emotionally change her for something even as simple as like a gas stove. If they say gas stove is bad for you, but this woman been cooking with gas stoves forever, and you trying to say, well, it's killing you, but I've been doing this for years, and this and that, and that, and that, and you can break out all the information, but you know, because it is emotionally attached to a gas stove type thing. You know what I mean? Like, it wouldn't make sense, but <laughs> anyway, like if a man was told, hey, man, you keep cooking on this gas stove, you you going to die. Well, then we would stop. <laughs> anyway, I got a couple of uh, super chats. I appreciate Savannah coming through, man. I appreciate all the love as well. Savannah Rivers, Rose Amore. You gotta make sure I say it all, get it all out there for you. Appreciate all the love. J Reggie M, you say, Jay, tell me why Stacy warns Maria. And I got this next. I swear it was right here next. This is what I was about to talk about, Maria and them. But it says, 
Tell me why Stacy warns Maria that Tommy is a dangerous man, like her brother is a dangerous. Make it make sense. That was cornball right there. It was. So that whole scene, I wasn't about to talk about this scene. I'm about to talk about Maria and Tommy arguing directly outside. But but this scene was funny and cornball in a way. So so Stacy supposed to know all this stuff and who she dealing with she would know Maria born and bred into this gang and also shout out to the actor that's playing Miguel he's been doing a damn good job a damn good job on the screen as Miguel a damn good job like he should get more roles off of this show I think um but not that other people, not this and nobody else, but I think Miguel is really holding it down in this role. Anyway, um, she should know this girl, grandma, her mama, all of these people, they live this life. They live in La Vida Loca up in this piece. You know what I'm saying? And you talking about Tommy Dangerous. Like she, yeah, I guess she could be with a nice guy. She was with the doctor. Dr. Mario up in this piece got his little, you know, Luigi smashed. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that was kind of weak to come up to her as if, like, she was a square. She ain't no square. You know, so she, that wouldn't have worked, and I was surprised that that worked. Now, the one part of that that was good is she said, ask about Lakeisha. Grant, but she should have said something like, you know, Tommy a dangerous man. The last three girlfriends he had all came up dead. That would have been better than he's dangerous. Be careful. That wasn't really enough. She should have been like, yeah, he dangerous. You think you know dangerous men? His last three girlfriends end up dead. Yeah, you hang with dangerous men, but all their girlfriends ain't dead, are they? Give me a call when you uh when you about to get your boobies cut off or something. <laughs> that would have been better right there. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know, just saying he dangerous ain't enough to somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? You about to get them nips trimmed. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna get a little nip t- nip and tuck. You're gonna cut them nips. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, yeah, man, uh, me, yeah, Miguel doing a great job. Savannah, you say the only thing Tommy did that pissed me off is when he crashed that sweet 15 party. Oh, man, he put his girlfriend at potential risk. Yes, that's what I was about to talk about, the argument and doing that. That was horrible. And... When he did that, it was so obvious after he did that, when Maria left, he left right behind her, right behind her. And they start arguing right outside the place, which I'm thinking, especially with little Abuela, (laughs) she got her eye on everything. So I'm thinking, how did they not see this? And how did they get away with it? He really was fortunate that they didn't get picked up on this. They loud right outside the joint arguing about this and that. Plus, she's still driving that Audi, ain't she? She hit it. I was talking to some people in Discord and stuff. Uh, my girl, they was like, how she just learned how to drive and then hitting the gas, pull off. I'm like, well... Technically, when you first learn how to drive, first thing you gonna do is probably speed. <laughs> Especially you get some damn turbo Audi up in this piece with all that power, all wheel drive or Audi all wheel drive. So, for those that don't know, all wheel drive in a car. When you hit the gas on a car in all wheel drive, all oh, that boy grip, all four of them boys. <laughs> so you know that's I love all wheel drive in a car. That's dope. Um, anyway, <laughs> get me talking about cars. Tommy, next car about to be a hearse. He keep on talking with her in front of the damn place, arguing and all of this and that. I just knew that it's going to get in trouble. But grandma was right. She saw it the whole time. 
Tommy coming for your spot, Miguel. And what Miguel didn't understand and what she saw is that Tommy made him expendable. Because if everybody that gets the supply comes to me and all that Miguel is doing is the middleman between Che and Tommy, well, it ain't no need for you if I meet Che because now I can go right to him and get the supply and everybody already comes to me. You out of business. You cut out the equation. And now he finally gets it. He thought that because Tommy was still buying the supply from him, he was good. But it, it would have been good if he was Che. But you not. And that's the problem. So, you know, it backfired on his ass. And now he was mean mugging like a mother at uh at uh what you call it. Reggie M, you say how Tommy know where the party was and sick sick the why cooking again. He said Tommy grabbed her just like the doctor handy dude did simp deja vu. <laughs> I know, right? He did grab her up like that. I'm surprised that ain't nobody see him. It could have been horrible. Um now, uh, let me see. I think Tommy saw uh didn't Maria tell them something about uh okay, let's see. Kitchen skills. You said it was right. Stacy's care. Oh, you talking about something else. Um, but, you know, I think, didn't he hear from Maria that Che was in town for the party? That still don't mean he would know where it is. So I get you on that. Um, and they do make stuff seem like Chicago is small, whereas it could have been anywhere. And, and Chicago is packed, man. Chicago is packed. You know, it's, it's, it's very few empty streets, you know, and it's stuff everywhere. So, you know, it could have been anything anywhere. But, I mean, I guess, lucky guess, lucky he figured it out. Who knows? Um, but, you know, I think Miguel and Tommy may have a showdown. I don't know. What do you all think? You think Miguel going to come for Tommy by the end of this season? I mean, if that happens, damn. That means almost everybody been wiped out except for the Serbs because it wouldn't be any more Flynn. Everybody else in the in the city work for Tommy. And if him and Miguel go to war, that's it. Now, if Tommy is smart, he probably would find a way for Miguel to get taken out that wouldn't lead back to him because he probably would still want to keep his relation. Not no, probably he had to keep his relationship good with Che. And if he killed Miguel and it wasn't approved, then he can get cut off as well, and then that would be the end of Tommy. Or he could even send them to come get Tommy, and then it definitely would be the end. So, um, you know, I'm thinking he probably will find it. I think he did mention something like this of try to have the Serbs and, uh, and Miguel and them kill each other or take each other out. I think he did mention something like that. So, um, it will be interesting to see how he uh, gets this plan into effect. Um, you know, we'll see. Let me get some more of these uh, comments. Uh, Savannah, you say Miguel better take his own insulin, if you know what I mean. <laughs> take his own medicine. Yeah, definitely better pay attention and uh, and, and get it together. Let's see. Savannah, you say he shouldn't come for Tommy unless he sends for him. Okay. Uh, AG, y'all think Mirkovich is finally taken out this season? He should be. 
He should be, and that's why I think Tommy might try to get Mirkovich and Miguel to probably take out each other so he'd be the last one standing and it would look like his hands are clean. But I think Mirkovich should be dead this season because really his organization is kind of in trouble and tatters and he needs Claudia as much as she needs him right now. You know, because he don't have any supply or any money. And that's why he was kind of coming at Claudia like, you know, well, I'll take my men away and let Tommy know that you you pretty much on your own because he need that money. Before, he wasn't saying stuff like that because he was in good good financial shape. And he was like, you know, I'll do business with you and this and that, but he wasn't necessarily trying to nickel and dime every move she make. But now, playtime over. He got bills to pay. He's like, hey, look here. We gonna have this drink. Now you can go and you make a hair appointment at the last cut, or you gonna give me a little piece of this action. Which one is it? And, you know, as we saw, she's had to swallow that medicine. <laughs> now, AG say, who going to murk, murk? <laughs> I like that. Who going to murk, murk? Hey, don't be surprised if it's Claudia. Because she just was saying, or, let me get my little drink. Or, we can go to war with the Serbs. Who's she going to go to war with the Serbs with? Just her and uh, Shanti, them two? Like, she sounded stupid saying that. But she willing to, to, to turn on them. And now that Murkovich is in her pockets, she probably ain't going to even appreciate that he's saving her ass every day with security, which, of course, we know Tommy could probably take out blindfolded if he wanted to but anyway he's saving her ass with security and she probably you know is not seeing that aspect of it and all she's probably feeling going off emotion is that it's another man in her pockets trying to control her business and it's like she is really against working with men and the drug game. And now that Murkovich see she wouldn't even toast. Like he he making sure your butt ain't killed and you don't want to pay for it. You know, and she just swallowed it down. And I wouldn't be surprised if old Cloudy tried to put him on the cloud. So I don't know what y'all think. Who might take old Merc? Who might Merc Merc? Savannah says she got her leg scratched this episode. <laughs> gonna murk, murk. You like that, AG? Murk, murk. Hey, Cloudy gonna take his ass out. You know what I'm saying? You all in my pockets. I'm tired of this. Jamil the King. What's up, brother? I ain't seen this name before. He said, Jay, I think the Tommy Morea scene was pointless. Why would they talk to each other at the party if they were being low-key? I agree. I I definitely agree. I think that was pointless and very risky in the sense of having a conversation like that when you know the dangers. Tommy talking about, I'm going to go talk to him. What? So wait, you think you can go all the stuff this man done did? First of all, Miguel be on Maria as if that's his woman. The way he's making sure she can't talk to anybody, it's really kind of sick. It's as if he's like, if I can't have you, nobody can. Now, in a way, I get that maybe he making sure no ops try to get to him or infiltrate the family through her. So if he was making sure he vetted everybody she talked to or this, that, and the other, that's different. But it's like, ain't nobody she gets to the doctor. Like, he should have had approved of her messing with the doctor. Because he know he ain't no op. She don't want to be in this life. 
and you should have left that alone. But even that was a problem. So that means ain't nobody good enough for her sister. You want to meet my sister? That's the problem I see with that, is that, you know, he ain't doing, you know, what he should, man. So, anyway. Jamil, you say, yeah, too risky, and I watch you a lot. I just don't comment much, LOL. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Hey, man, anybody out there that watch a lot and don't comment, you could at least throw a thumbs up or 100 emoji or something every now and then. Let me know you out there. Let me give you a little bit of acknowledgement. I appreciate you, and I'm glad you enjoy the show and the comments. And, hey, I don't mind saying and and reading the comments for my people i've been doing it for years shout out to everybody that's been part of this channel but i've been doing this for what seven years straight now seven years straight on youtube and i got almost what 2500 videos made and created and went through a lot of different phases on here so I appreciate everybody for rocking with me. And always, don't be afraid to say something every now and then because I like to try to get to as many comments as I can. I may miss you. Don't take it personal. But I do try to remember what's up. What's up, Quazo? That's a name I ain't never seen before as well. Appreciate you. Jigger, 1017, what's good? You say, Jay, is Diamond going to cooperate with the police? about who knocked off baby Obama. Damn, that's a good question. And it would have been better if he didn't kill that cop because it would have been a better answer for me and probably saying, yeah. But now that he killed the cop and turned into Candyman, I don't think he going to help the cops. I think he may even kill that dude and torture him or something. You kill Obama. No. That right there is what I call a fade. That right there is a ball fade. That right there is the bowl. <laughs> Just start slicing him up. Giving him, uh, you know what I'm saying, different different uh, names for the cut. <laughs> Buick KPP78, what's good? 100, 100. That's another new name. I appreciate y'all coming on through. Miguel, you say, since the original Power J, I've been watching your channel. Yes, you have, man. And I remember that name since that long. You have been, man, and that's years so i appreciate it savannah been around for years so i appreciate y'all man for for the support and even supporting other people that i brought on this channel and other things even though i'm trying to be more careful with that for a lot of different reasons appreciate everybody and all the support Savannah, you say, yeah, Jigga will diamond rat out the two derelict guys who shot Leon. Yeah, I think he's going to kill them, kidnap, torture them, and don't be surprised if you see one of them dudes or both of them getting killed by diamond. And it ain't going to be pretty. he probably slice them up. <laughs> Nelwyn, Nelwyn Andrus. What's good? Did I get the name right? Nelwyn, 100 to you, sis. Appreciate the love and support, everybody. <laughs> you say Jamal, Jamil, he did turn into candy man. <laughs> ah, straight up, man. Hey, that's the first thing I thought of when I saw that. Lord Dragon, good night to you, too. I guess you already know I'm about to wrap it up. I normally do about an hour, and uh, like I say, it was hard for me to even get up tonight. I'm just, My back is killing me and other things, and I said, man, I got to come and talk with my people. So I definitely appreciate all the love, support, all the comments. When people be ready before the show start at 10, 
and comment. That get me hype and ready. So I appreciate all the love, all the support, and everything, man. Y'all been great. And uh, I did have a good time tonight chatting with everybody. I ain't even have a drink of my little liquid jet fuel. Anyway, let me get up out of here. AG, you said Diamond said, rip me out the plastic. I already thought you knew. <laughs> hey, for real, for real. Definitely. Yeah. Savannah, I appreciate you as well. Everybody out there dealing with some stuff, whether it be your kidneys like Savannah, your back like me, your ass, <laughs> from the rooter to the tutor, whatever it may be. Hey, man, it's better to laugh than to cry. You got to get your mind off the pain and into something else every now and then. And that's what these shows is all about. No, this ain't no damn history channel educational material. It's something to get your mind off your day, off your pains, off your ass, have a laugh or two, talk about something else other than bills and and who ain't did right and who did you wrong and who pissed you off and have a little fun with some friends, even if it's this little internet friend community right here. And you know, hey, better to, you know, Get that out of you, have a laugh or two, then hold stuff in and stress. So I appreciate everybody coming through. Sunday, I'm going to be back at 10 o'clock, and I'm going to talk about the weekly topics. Sunday at 10 o'clock p.m., doing my podcast, just talking about whatever that happened this week, like Suzanne Summers passing away and others. So... Come on through Sunday. Bring that same energy with the comments. Whatever what happens with the stream, whatever we talk about, wherever it may go, that's what's going to happen. I got a few topics lined up, but hey, it is what it is. So come on through Sunday, 10 p.m. Definitely hit that like button, people. I appreciate you, Reggie. Shout out to all the people with the super chat love today. Damn, man, y'all actually made me feel special for a change. Reggie M, Savannah, Queen Brie L, Hope is Lovely, J Lynn, AG. All of y'all came through, and I appreciate all the love and support. Everybody, y'all have a good weekend. Be safe and deuces. <laughs>